Hello, friends. We meet again. I will uh, encourage you as we meet today, in case we are meeting for the first time, you could make a, a flip back, watch the previous presentation, and it will give you a background of what we are discussing today. Today, we are talking about crucibles of life. You may be wondering, what are these crucibles? Crucibles are containers that we use, especially in laboratories, in order to subject substances to extreme heat. If you want to smelt a metal, you could put it on top of a crucible, put a fire underneath. And this is very intense heat. It hits this crucible, and the substance that is on the crucible is heated, and as it is heated, depending on what the substance is made of, it will either melt, or it will soften, or it will harden. But this heating that is underneath will not leave this substance the same. So this container that is placing this substance on top is the crucible. Today, we are talking about crucibles that come. We have this assumption in life, very good assumption, but we want to interrogate this assumption. You know what we always think? We always look at God and say God is good, God is kind, God is patient, God is ever loving. These are the qualities that we have always assigned to God. And rightly so. God is kind, God is patient, God is loving, God is good. Also, we have always assumed, and rightly so, that the devil is evil, the devil is unfair, the devil is jealous, the devil is cunning, and we have always assigned these traits upon the devil. But at times in life, these assumptions that we have about God and those that we have about the devil have made us to think that when we are with God, everything, because God is good, my life will always be good. Because God is kind, life will always be kind to me. Because God is patient, reality will always be patient with me. Everything will be good to me. And we always sing with Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. Things look rosy. We always think that when we have God, things will always look rosy, nice, charming. And if the devil is with us, things will be bad. But today, we want to acknowledge that they are crucibles of life, these crucibles.
Number one, we want to talk about crucibles that come because they are a surprise to our life. Crucibles that surprise us. Life, my dear friends, can surprise you. Peter, 1 Peter, uh, Peter chapter 4, verse 12, we are told by Peter that we should not think about it something strange for us to be tried. We will always have trials, even if we have God on our side. There are things that will try us. The Bible says people will be tried even though God is with them. They will be placed on crucibles. Number one, we have crucibles that are surprises. And these surprises come when people least expect them. Number two, they are crucibles Two, crucibles of Satan. Satan as well brings crucibles to our lives. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. We are told that our enemy, our adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion. He is ready to devour us. The devil will throw crucibles. He will throw trials upon our lives. Give us difficult experiences. Number three, we have crucibles of sin. Sin has consequences. You do this, this will happen. Sin moves from cause to effect. So you go to Romans chapter 1, verse 18. We are reminded about the wrath of God, which is directed towards sin. It moves directly to punish what is sinful. Not only we have these three crucibles, but uh, we have crucibles as well that come because they are meant to purify us. The fourth crucible is the crucible of purification. Go to Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 7. We have these crucibles that are meant to purify us, subject us to extreme heat in order to purify, to make us, refine us into gold. As we are purified on this, we come out as gold. The best qualities in us are realized. Then number five, we have the crucibles of maturity. When you go to 2 Corinthians, as you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, we are told about the experience of Paul. Paul didn't want, he wanted to live a perfect life like us. But he says, there is this thorn in the flesh. This thorn in my flesh, it's always upon me. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Even as we live, there are crucibles that will continue to torment us, make our lives difficult, make us to struggle with life. These are the five crucibles. And what can we learn from these crucibles? The first thing that we need to learn on a spiritual note, we need 
to learn. First, that we should never think that when we are always with God, then everything will be trial free. It does not really mean that when somebody is close to God, things will always be smooth. There is a very wrong assumption that makes us always think that if one is walking with God, he will move on carpet. If one is moving with God, she will travel on carpet. But the Bible has shown us that this is not the case. It doesn't mean that things will always be smooth. Number two, it does not mean that when somebody is encountering trials, that person has moved away from God. There are people who struggle with life, but it does not mean that those people are not living with God. You remember Paul, as uh, Paul was on his journey to Rome, and as he comes to this island, a snake is upon him. And they say, this person has done something wrong. That is why this snake has followed him. And uh, later on, the snake does not harm him. Then they say, no, he must be a god. This cannot happen. Uh, these are assumptions that we have about life. That when something wrong happens to another person, that person is on the wrong path. That is not always or necessarily the case. Number three lesson that we need to learn is when we have these trials in our lives, they, our God intends to get the best out of us. Like gold, we will be subjected to these difficult experiences and as we go through them, the best out of us is realized. Remember Joseph, after conquering this temptation with the wife of Potiphar, the best in him is realized. So as we encounter these trials, as we go through this difficult experience of life, God intends to get the best out of us. And what can we do with this in real life? When we have learned about these crucibles that challenge, bedevil our lives, I want us to focus on practical experiences that confront people. One of those that I want to look at is disasters that confront families and the disaster of death. When we lose our loved ones, I want to look at that one first. Where you lose your loved one and you have not planned for it, you have not prayed for it, you did not expect anything of that nature. But it comes. You are told your brother, your sister, your close relative has died in a vehicle accident. And you ask yourself why. And I want to tell you, this is one reality of life. Death 
is a reality of life. It happens to the unfaithful, it happens to the faithful. Your loved one who died and you never expected it, it happened, it confronted you. I want to give you this assurance, dear friend, that God in heaven still loves you, even though you lost your loved one. Even though your loved one, the very one whom you love, is going through sickness. Just like Christ and Lazarus. Christ was perfect, he was good, but he lost a loved one, Lazarus, whom he loved. So you will have that even if you believe in God, number one. Number two, lesson number two, we encounter financial disaster. I talked about debt, then finance. Your house can be lost, your business collapses, everything is lost. And I want to assure you, God still cares about you. He is still there for your life. He still understands you. Like Job, you may have this loss where you have to live with loss. Your cattle are stolen. They still thieves steal from your home. And be assured, you are still in the hands of the master. You may be in a crucible, but the master still cares about you. The loss number three is the loss of company, the loss of friends, where those people who are dear to your life, uh, whom you trusted, they betray you. Betray them. And you ask yourself, why? This person, I loved him, I cared about him, and at times, even your spouse, you discover he is cheating on you, she is cheating on you. Does it mean that you have departed from God? No, it's a crucible God still cares. And what can we learn as we come to a close? I want you to go with uh, three important lessons as we go. Number one, never assume that when you are with God, everything will always be smooth. Don't have that assumption. But it does not mean that everything will always be bad. No. But know for certain that it does not really mean that if you are with God, then no loss of employment, no loss of a loved one, no. Lesson number two that you should go with from here is Satan will continue to throw spanners on your life even though you are with God. Satan will continue to torment your life just like in the experience of Job where he said, uh, God said, if you considered my servant Job, he will always fight you. Lesson number three that you need to remember, these crucibles come and they go. They will not be there forever. At the end, these crucibles of life will be over. That's why John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was over. It had passed away. May the Lord be with you. May he encourage you. May he strengthen you as you go through the crucibles of life. I invite you now that we pray together. Shall we pray? Lord and Father in heaven, thank you for this time. Thank you for reminding us that crucibles will be there, but you still care about us. And you intend to get the best for our lives, even in the midst of these crucibles. Guide us, strengthen us. In your name we pray. Amen. 